Hi, I'm Victoria Rose and I'm autistic. I don't really know how to begin this video. I guess we could say this is a new phase of life or a new revelation. It's a time of sadness and introspection. I took a whole two weeks off filming my adventures in Australia because at this point I wasn't adventuring. I was doing something else. I was getting answers, and the final day, the final session, I'd finally have the answer or the diagnosis of something I've suspected for a very long time. Even though I was really confident I knew what I had, I was still kind of nervous when I was waiting for my final session and the actual diagnosis. Hi, I'm Victoria Rose and I'm autistic. I don't like I don't have a script for this video. I just wanted to talk to you guys. I I don't really sit down and make sit down videos anymore of me talking to you. So I have Asperger's, uh, high functioning autism, and I was diagnosed in Australia. Uh, the reason I pursued my diagnosis at this time, like I'm an adult now, like usually you get diagnosed as a child. I never got diagnosed as a child, even though they did want to put me through classes and testing and stuff. But my parents never really wanted to do that. So I kind of just suffered for a really long time <laughs> and I finally got a real diagnosis because Australia is actually, uh, I think, one of the leader, leading countries in uh, autism research. Paying for it in Australia is a lot cheaper than trying to pay for it in America or anywhere else. But this journey did not begin in Australia. This began at birth when I was conceived, probably. I don't know how autism works or how you get it. That's one of the things that's still pretty unknown about it. And a lot of you are probably like, Wait, you have autism? <laughs> like, I mean, I knew you were kind of autism? Yeah, I do. And it's um, something, as a female, that you have to mask a lot. If you are a female with autism or Asperger's, I hope that I can help you feel like you can fit in the world more or at least thrive in the world more, even if, in, if you're a male too, obviously, because it's an alien experience. It's really difficult to process normal everyday things and it makes life a lot harder in a lot of ways but you also have this other edge this other side to you autism in females presents itself way differently than in males and a lot of people don't know this a lot of people think that males just have autism more than females do and that's not true you guys have seen my struggle in trying to find myself in the world and you know what i've realized i'm not really gonna find myself in the world I have to find myself within myself, which is probably true for anybody. I'm, I'm not going to find relatability too much in the world. I, I never really realized the things that I'm doing different or wrong in society. I have been through so many experiences, I've done so many things to where I've been able to mask this like really, really well. A lot of people that I hang out with, they're like, I don't see your autism. We mask it. As females, if you are a female with Asperger's, you know what this means, and I know that you understand what I'm talking about, and it is exhausting, and the whole internet is not gonna know, you know, who I truly am as a person. The people that I've been in relationships with do. It's just a, a, a language barrier. Uh, growing up, I didn't talk at all in school, and I didn't have any friends. I was very invisible when I did try to talk. I didn't know how to get the words out. It's very hard to describe. It's not being shy. I felt like a monster most of my childhood. Like I was some sort of something that wasn't meant to be, like something that didn't fit in. And as a child, this is the worst feeling in the world to not be able to fit in. I've traveled the entire United States. I've traveled to many countries. I've been through so many social situations that have traumatized me but also made me learn what is acceptable in society and what is not because the world is not made for people 
that are autistic. It's made for neurotypicals, and a neurotypical is someone who thinks generally how the masses, not the masses, but like how normal people think. Because everybody has these evolutionary or social things that are just innate in you, but people with autism completely lack that, and it has caused so much undescribable pain that nobody can see, and right now, I'm going through some major shit that like, yes, the autism did affect and made something bad with that, but it's not because of that, it's because I'm going through something else as well, but fucking hell, I'm not a bad person, I'm just autistic, like, jeez. I didn't know this seems like random for me to just be upset like this, but when you try so hard, like your whole fucking life, like you try so hard to be what people want and to do the right things and never, I've never wanted to give up. I never give up on anything and I've learned coping skills and I've learned to never get up, give up through having autism in my entire life. You have to really develop these skills, but it's so hard. Whenever you see these people where everything's come so naturally, it's like, I want that. Like you see me as this monster, this person that's selfish or, or uh, messed up or weird or broken. A lot of people call me broken. Or, I'm sorry you see me as that, but I can't be anything else. I literally can't. I've tried. I'm the best actress in the world. Well, I can't say that, but I'm really good at acting things out. And it's because I have to mask things. I have to do this. It's not, none of this is intentionally malicious or none of this is manipulative. It's survival and it's coping. And um, I think a lot of people with autism are misjudged as being some sort of negative type person when the ones that I've met have been so innocent and pure compared to neurotypicals that I've met. And I'm not trying to cut out neurotypicals here. I love you guys. I know you guys are cool too. So as a female with autism, you probably want to know what I've experienced and what are my weaknesses or what are the symptoms of it. The biggest things for me personally, everybody is different with it, is I can't make eye contact at all. That's really difficult for me. I mean, there's tactics where you can like, you look this amount of seconds, you look away. Autism is a lot of um, strategy and planning and trying to do things naturally. You're always on alert. You're always constantly thinking, okay, how does, when, when it comes naturally to other people. So that's kind of like what Asperger's is like. I don't pick up on a lot of things that are going on socially. We could be in a social situation and people will just be talking, da, 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 and then afterwards, like people will be like, can you believe, what, can you believe, can you believe how they acted? Can you believe it? And I'll just be like, what, what happened? Even though I was there, you know, I was there like everybody else, but I just didn't understand what the social situation was. I, um, I become very trusting of people because I don't see bad intentions. I don't see the things that I think other people would see. I take things pretty literally. Uh, sometimes humor is lost on me, but sometimes I'm like really, really good at being sarcastic, but then sometimes I don't know when I'm being sarcastic. Uh, very, good. I can be very unaware of my emotions. I'm really bad at emotions. I'm really behind on them too. Someone will be like, you know, you're gonna go through this. You're just not right now, but you're going to. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like, whoosh, and I'm like, oh, what is this pain inside me? I don't know where this came from. Uh, I'm very logical, extremely obsessive. My friend the other day, she's like, can you hold this, on, can you hold my umbrella? So I, I had my umbrella and then I took her umbrella and I was holding both of them while she was like trying to get something and she was like completely getting rained on. But I'm like, okay, she told me to hold the umbrella so I'm just holding both of them. She's like, I meant to hold it over me. <laughs> These things I just don't get and it makes relationships very hard except with the real good people that know me truly. They know that I'm not being offensive. I'm just, I don't process things the way that normal people do. I could actually make a separate video about what the symptoms are and like, you know, what affects me and stuff like that because this video is going to be way too long if I try to go in depth with, it, with my childhood, with the symptoms of females with Asperger. If you want, um, I'll do that, like a and a about it, what people actually want to know. But this is kind of just me coming out um, and finally telling you guys because I got an official diagnosis with a psychologist. Um, what led me to get a diagnosis is that I don't want my problems to be somebody else's problems. I want to be able to handle and understand why I work the way that I do and give myself some grace whenever I need to do certain things. Like, for example, I need to like just leave and be alone or recover or put headphones in and not listen to anyone or zone out and it's okay because I haven't been very gentle with myself. But it started in Japan. I went to a psychologist and just told him everything and he's like, he didn't give me an official diagnosis, but he's like, yeah, like, uh, pretty certain you have it and he wrote up a whole thing about it and it's like that's what it sounds like so 
you should go and you know try to find psych uh, therapy for people with you know high functioning autism. I'm like, okay, but that's not an official diagnosis. So like months later, I um, I went in for the sole purpose of getting a real diagnosis, and I went in for like four sessions then, and we did tests, we did like. Um, uh, situational tests, we did puzzles and face reading tests, and then he just asked me about my past, he asked me about this and that and the other, and he's like, well, there's no surprise here at the very end, he's like, we both know, like I knew when you first came in that you are autistic, and he actually work, he actually um, works with a lot of people with autism, and um, people like all over the spectrum, autism is a spectrum, I'm on the high functioning end, and um, but he works with tons of different types of autistic people. So he gave me the diagnosis. He also diagnosed me with um, anxiety, which um, most, if not all, autistic high functioning autistic people have because there is a constant pressure from the world to be a certain way. And that's what produces a lot of anxiety that am I doing this right? Am I this, am I that? Am I just thinking so much and also with depression. And that's another common thing for autistic people to have. When you don't fit into the world that you're placed into, um, which people without autism feel like this too, then you don't feel human. And that's not a good feeling. And people don't see it in you, they don't understand. You barely understand. So like everything is so confusing and that produces a lot of anxiety. Like you get tired. And it's another reason I wanted to get diagnosed because I'm tired. Like, I'm tired of feeling this way and there not being a reason for it. Like. Um, it just, you know, when people get diagnosed, it just clicks. Or when they, they find out about it and they realize they have it, it just clicks. This is me. This doesn't define me, but this is part of me. So another thing is that I've always suspected my brother to have it and also my father. It was hard growing up under that. And my brother just, is, I think, I feel like he's just classic Asperger's. And uh, he's so funny. And it's genetic. The main thing I want to convey to you guys is that it doesn't matter, you know, like we're all different, um, but this is something that if I can help a little bit with, then I will. I'm still learning myself. On top of having Asperger's and traveling and having no home and having a lot of broken relationships and trying to, you know, run a whole social media career, things have been really hard lately and I'm trying my best as myself to handle what life gives me. We will make more videos about this if you guys are interested. It's kind of hard to have a diagnosis because you think back to all the mistakes you've made and all the things you couldn't understand and it's like, if I could have only understood that or worked on that more, then that wouldn't have been broken and that wouldn't have hurt so bad and this and that. But life is a journey and we're all learning and even though you're an adult, you don't stop growing and learning about yourself. Stay extraterrestrial. I love all of you. Just always be the best person that you can be because you can't be this cookie cutter person. I'll see you in the next adventure and the next video. Bye. <laughs>